Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and Horror. Today we are going to unravel the secrets and past of Bluebeard, the cruel ruler of Blaustein, a leader among pirates and criminals, and a serial killer who murdered his wives. But first, a few brief clarifications. Before we start to explore the Sea of Sorrows, our explorations through the mist took place in the core of Ravenloft and passed through domains that had already been inserted and described in novels, adventures, and mainly in the Ravenloft Gazetteers, books that brought the tailored information about the domains and their dark lords. Until that moment, I had taken care to feature the Ravenloft setting in my videos, taking into account only official sources. However, in the case of Blaustein and other domains not previously discovered by the Ravenloft Gazetteers, I intend to expand on these sources of information. The domain of Blaustein first appeared in the Dark Lord supplement, and later was featured in the short story Sight and Sound, in the book Tales of Ravenloft. After these first appearances, the domain received only brief mentions in the Domains of Dread book and in the Ravenloft campaign setting for 3rd edition. The domain should have been covered in one of the 3rd edition gazetteers, focused in the Sea of Sorrows, but unfortunately White Wolf's license to release books for the setting came to an end, and these books haven't been written. However, the Ravenloft fan community wouldn't let the setting rot in oblivion. The Fraternity of Shadows website, the most well-known and organized site for fans of the setting, has published netbooks that continue the Gazetteer's proposal, exploring in depth and detail the domains of dread. Some of these books explore the Nocturnal Sea, the Domain of Soaring, or the Cluster of Zerisha, for example, and for some time now, they have developed a gazetteer for the Sea of Sorrows. Although the gazetteer of the Sea of Sorrow is not yet finalized and published as a single book, some of its passages describing some domains have already been published as previews in the Quart of the Raven netbooks. I will also leave the link where you can download the book. The next video about Blaustein will be based on the official setting material and the article about Blaustein written by Joe Peckin. The article on Blaustein was published as a preview of the Sea of Sorrows Gazetteer, and it's possible that the final text will change when the Gazetteer is finally published. Are you ready? On our travel to the Sea of Sorrows aboard the Black Pelican ship, we continue to cross the sea to the destination of the island of Dominia, to search for the whereabouts of Dr. Rudolf van Richten. Our next stop along the way is the island of Blaustein, where our ship has some business to take care of, and is going to disembark the young Anne Garnier, the bride of Lord Raoul Morel, the infamous Bluebeard. The captain of our vessel, charges us with fulfilling the last request of Anne's late brother to investigate Lord Raoul Morel and ensure that the tragic fate of his previous deceased wives was due to unexpected tragedies and misfortunes, and that his sister would be safe in this future marriage. Our investigations lead us to secretly explore Castle Bluebeard, and we stumble upon a locked door that holds horrible secrets. Inside, we found the bodies of Bluebeard's wives hanging from hooks on the walls, in varying degrees of decomposition. The shock of our discovery is followed by the onslaught of the ghost of his dead wives, who paralyze us with their icy spectral touch. We are saved from certain death by Bluebeard, who ordered the ghost of his wives away from us, and take our paralyzed bodies to his dungeons. For a long time, we remain imprisoned in deplorable conditions, perhaps forgotten by our captor. After some time abandoned, we are finally visited by Bluebeard, the sadistic ruler 
then begins to torture us for answers. He seems to revel in our suffering and elicts responses in our minds that we don't even have vocalized. Somehow, his mind seems to connect with ours, and our time in the torture halls seems to make us intimate in a macabre and cruel way. Power of Raven Come on, Gear. Why are you so worried? Give me back the keys to the castle. Ah, I see the marks of your curiosity and treachery. You must have been quite eager to know the contents of the room. Them, know them you will, for you join the others there for all eternity. Bluebeard is the Dark Lord of the Domain of Blausen and is adapted from a literary character to the Ravenloft setting. A cruel and tyrannical caliban, Bluebeard is the ruthless leader of a band of pirates and criminals and a terrible misogynistic serial killer that murder his wives. The character is a direct adaptation of the literary character Bluebeard. Bluebeard is a macabre fairy tale which probably originated from oral tradition, but the tale was recorded under the title La Bable, written by Charles Perrault and first published in the book Le Comte de la Mer de Loire, or The Mother Goose Tales, in 1697. Although portrayed in a children's storybook, it is a macabre tale of a serial killer who murdered his wives and was probably inspired by real personalities. In addition to the obvious and direct literary influence, the texts created by the Fraternity of Shadows article also seem to merge the figure of Bluebeard with the theme of piracy, perhaps even merging the figure with that of the terrible pirate Blackbeard. Bluebeard appears to be a middle-aged man, but the truth is that since becoming a Dark Lord, he has stopped aging and has already existed for centuries. He is a caliban, an individual with a body corrupted by evil energies while still in his mother's womb, and was born with a swollen and deformed features, and now has as his main and most striking feature his dark beard of a slightly bluish tone. His body is hunchbacked, short, obese and stout, with slightly disproportionate limbs and his facial features used to be swollen and reddened, although since becoming a Dark Lord, he has been slowly softening his features. Although he is far from being considered handsome, he can currently pass for an ordinary man, and perhaps, centuries later, might even be considered handsome in inverse proportion to his corruption and evil. Bluebeard dresses like an aristocrat, and likes to vary the style of his attire. Sometimes he appears using a turban and aristocratic clothing from Parasia, or with typical attire of a demon noble, a Barovian boyar, or even a member of a traditional modern family. He wears a lot of jewelry, and his fat, swollen fingers are always full of valuable rings. Exotic perfume are also common, and his over-the-top clothing sometimes look ridiculous, but few have the audacity or courage to comment on this fact or mock Blaustein's tyrannical leader. Bluebeard grew up with rejection due to his grotesque caliban traits and has difficulty establishing trusting relationships with anyone. Paranoid, he always expects the worst from those around him and frequently test their loyalty for flaws. He is lonely and needy, but that hasn't stopped him from developing cruel, violent and misogynistic habits. His noble background has given him a proper education, and he behaves in public as a polite aristocrat and feather figure to his subject, 
always seeking their loyalty and affection. His powers as a Dark Lord made him more confident, arrogant and tyrannical. Bluebeard is an experienced combatant. In 2nd edition he was a 5th level fighter, and in the version created by the Fraternity of Shadows for the 3rd edition of TND, he has 4th levels as an aristocrat and 4th levels as a thug. Although he usually can be found alone in his castle for long periods of time, he can always count on the quick support of his militia and his loyal pirates and criminals who inhabit the island. The ruler of Blaustein has also some supernatural abilities. Since he became a Dark Lord, his aging has slowly to a very slow, almost imperceptible rate, and over time his grotesque features have softened it. He has also little protection from magical effects and is immune to any energy drain, making the ghost of his former wives unable to harm him. Among his most useful powers is the ability to detect lies and to read the superficial thoughts of those he talks to. After a period of time with a person, he can also have a sense of the most shameful secrets, and might use this to his benefit or to torment others. Those born in Blaustein, or who make this domain their home, can have their memories affected by Bluebeam who can insert false memories into their minds or prevent them from remembering anything he does not want to be remembered. Also, once a week he can send dreams to a victim he has previous knowledge of and implant a mental suggestion into these dreams, an ability he uses to try to influence or convince the families of his desired future brides to agree to marry him. Owner of a vast fortune, accumulated from years of profits from crimes and piracy, he has countless magical items, but always carries with him an enchanted silver dagger. Usually, also carries other weapons as scimitars, rapiers, and arquebus. Bluebeard is plagued by his loneliness and lack of female attention. The dark powers have cursed Bluebeard and whenever he desires a woman who resides in Blaustein, she appears to his eyes like the corpses of his ex-wives, which forces him to seek the company of women from foreign lands. In addition, every night the ghosts of his former wives return to torment him with pleas and lamentations, and with a spectral touch that, although harmless to him, he finds very repulsive. Bluebeard was once scarlet Raoul de Seer in his distant homeworld, but despite his noble birth, he lived most part of his life with rejection due to his deformities as a caliber. He eventually assumed the title, land and riches of his family, and became a ruler. When the mist drew him to Blaustein, he was already the ruler of the island and established his iron rule over the Islanders, running a pirate and criminal operation. He is unable to close the borders of his domain, but the surrounding seas are well defended by the pirate ships that serve him. Once a year, the dark powers allow Bluebeard to briefly escape their grasp, an ability he uses to test his newly wedded wives to command raids with his pirates, or even to find possible new marriages in nearby lands. After a period of three days absence, however, he is magically brought back to his castle by the calling of the ghost of his wives to return to his prison of mists. But what secrets mark the past of this grotesque murderer and pirate lord? How the deformed son of an aristocrat rose to become a wife killer, leader of an infamous island of criminals and pirates. Raoul de Seer was born on some distant world more than a hundred years ago. The child suffered from evil and corrupting energies while still in his mother's womb and was born deformed with a hunchback 
and the grotesque swollen features of a caliban. He was saved from extermination or ostracism for being the son of a wealthy aristocrat, but he experienced the rejection of society. Mocked and rejected by others, Raoul grew up as a lonely young man and spent much of his time reading books, becoming a very cultured and versed in many subjects. When he was in his early twenties, he grew a beard to cover some of his swollen and misshapen features, but found that his facial hair had a strange bluish tint. Mischievously, some people began to call him by the nickname Bluebeard, but Raoul became fond of the nickname and demanded to be called Lord Bluebeard ever since. Raoul inherited his parents' wealth and titles, but none of that made up for his loneliness. He craved respect, friendship and love, especially from female companionship, but his grotesque appearance never allowed him to form a lasting relationship. He tried to establish a romance with several women of the aristocracy, initially through letters in which he demonstrated his intelligence and culture through poetry. Initially successful, plans for future relationships ended when his suitors discovered his hideous appearance. He didn't give up, however, and to Raoul's surprise, he finally found a candidate who seemed to accept him for who he was, and in just under a month of romance, he married Marguerite Cis. The marriage quickly proved to be a serious mistake. Marguerite had no affection for Raoul and was only interested in his vast fortune. When he discovered that his wife was cheating on him, in a fit of rage he slit her troth and hid her body in a secret room of the castle, to which only he had the keys. He then announced that his wife had abandoned him to run off with a bar. He continued to look for a new wife, believing that he was a unique and valuable man, and that eventually some woman would recognize his word, regardless of his appearance. His next wife, Lenore, was also interested in obtaining his fortunes and titles, and tried to poison him shortly after the marriage. She met the same fate as Marguerite, being murdered and her body hidden in his secret room, he told society that she had died of unknown causes in her sleep and simulated her burial with an empty casket on the castle cemetery. Beatrice, his third wife, was caught trying to steal from his coffers to run away with a lover and was also brutally murdered, and her body is stored in the secret room of his castle. He revealed to everyone how she had disappeared without a trace. He even led a search that was carried out in the surroundings that found no trace of her. Bluebeard kept his dead wife's bodies as trophies and the secret room as a morbid obsession and a reminder that he couldn't trust anyone easily. Sometimes he entered the room to watch their bodies decompose with sick satisfaction. His fourth and young wife, Marcella, came to him to an arranged marriage. Despite the age difference and Raoul's strange habits, Marcella found that she could have a reasonably harmonious relationship with Raoul if she didn't go against his wishes. A month after the wedding, even though he found no evidence of infidelity in the innocent Marcella, he decided to test his wife and announced that he was going on a trip. He left with her the keys to the entire castle, including the key to the secret room where he kept the bodies of his former wives, warning her that she should never enter that room. Shortly after his departure, Marcella ended up not resisting curiosity and temptation and opened it with the golden key the room of horrors where Bluebeard's former wives were kept. The key was marked in blood red 
by a strange rust on the lock, incriminating her for her indiscretion. Shortly after, and much earlier than planned, Raoul returned to the castle and found Marcella scared and horrified. He calmed the young woman down, asking for the keys back, only to viciously murder her in sequence, slitting her throat and adding her to his collection of murdered ex-wives. To the world, he declared that she had died of complications from a pregnancy. Three wives followed Marcella's destiny and were also killed after revealing themselves to be unfaithful to his judgment, interested only in his riches, or even simply victims of their curiosity, killed for disobeying his arbitrary commands. Camilla was announced as the victim of an illness. Matilda would have supposedly drowned, and Jacinda would have gone mad and committed suicide by throwing herself off a cliff. Now, only the empty tombs remained in the cemetery, while their bodies adorned the castle's macabre secret room. Bluebeard's bad luck in marriage began to spread, and in one of his future relationships, he was approached by Conomore, the older brother of a bride-to-be. The middle-aged man wanted to protect his younger sister from Bluebeard, and saw the violent and grotesque nobleman through his polite manners. Unable to put an end to the arranged marriage, Conamore proposed a pact to Lord Raoul. If his sister was released from the obligation of this coming marriage, he would become his servant until the end of his master's life. The deal was accepted by Bluebeard who gained in Conamore a faithful servant and loyal right-hand man. He would become his main ally to conduct affairs of the castle administration and to help him hide the evidence of his crimes, although he would later discover that he was eternally imprisoned in this position of servitude. Rubiard's eighth wife, Jacqueline Mandor, was perhaps one of Raoul's saddest crimes and drew the attention of the dark powers to his monstrous deeds. Unlike the previous wives, trapped in an arranged marriage against their will, or participants, in some game of dubious interests, Jacqueline was truly in love with Raoul, having seen beyond his deformed appearance to find qualities in the sophisticated and intelligent Raoul. Their lives seemed perfect and Raoul briefly experienced someone who treated him with love and genuine affection. His paranoid and cruel mind, however, led him to test his new wife's obedience in his cruel games. He announced that he was going to visit a sick aunt on her deathbed, and that he would be away for about a month, leaving with Jacqueline the keys to the castle, with the same warnings about the forbidden access to the secret room. Shortly after his departure, however, Jacqueline ended up giving in to her curiosity and opened Bluebeard's secret room to discover the remains of his former wives. Bluebeard almost immediately returned to the castle, claiming to have left something behind, only to find Jacqueline's discovery. Not even the genuine affection she had for Bluebeard before her discovery was enough to save her from this horrible fate. Bluebeard slit Jacqueline's throat and hung her on a hook in his gruesome collection of ex-wives in his secret room. At that moment, the eight times murderer of women saw through the window of his castle as a strange mist invaded his lands and property, which transported him to the demiplane of dread. When the dense mist finally lifted, Bluebeard found himself in a different castle, this time located on a small island in an unknown sea. The servants of that castle seemed to recognize him as master of this fortress, and Raoul soon discovered 
that the place was full of countless deadly traps, which pleased him. Exploring the small rocky island, he found the port village of Rice, inhabited by a small population that in his eyes were nothing more than riffraff and plebeian scum. To his surprise, he discovered that he was cursed. Whenever he covets any women on the island, regardless of age and appearance, they are seen by his eyes as the appearance of the corpses of his ex-wives. Worse than that, when he spent the first night in his castle, he saw the ghosts of his former wives emerge from the secret room and gather around him, with supplications and lamentations, begging for forgiveness for the sins and the discretions, as if he could release them from this pitiful state of torment in the afterlife. His raids have a dangerous paralyzing touch that is capable of draining the life out of their victims, but they cause Bluebeard nothing but terrible disgust and revulsion. Night after night, he has to endure the incessant wails of his former wives and their icy cold touch, which prevent him from finding proper rest. Before long, he found himself a prisoner of the island, unable to escape very far from the shores of Blaustein. Despite this, in contact with the population of Rise, Bluebeard discovered that he could sense if they were lying to him, and even manipulate the memories of the villagers if he so desired, powers he used to find out traitors and obtain the adoration and admiration of his subjects. The first contact records of the island with navigators from other lands occurred in the year 643 of the Barovian calendar, when there was the contact with navigators from Mordent. Some attempts at trade and diplomacy were established, but Blaustein had little to offer in this regard. Trapped on a fishing island with no great resources or productive capabilities, and inhabited by the worst kind of scum, Bluebeard quickly organized his loyal subjects into lucrative activities that might maintain his status and luxurious life of a wealthy aristocrat. Giving vent to his most cruel and violent side, he organized his subjects to act as bloodthirsty pirates and marauders of the seas. His funding and leadership came with a demand for a sizable share of the booty, and soon the greedy Bluebeard saw his fortune grow even further. With their memories manipulated by Bluebeard, the island population has a great devotion and loyalty to him, whom they see as a fierce protector and leader. This false affection and obedience he received from the population gave him moments of brief empty satisfaction, as he secretly knows that this was all the result of his mental manipulation. He craves female company the presence of an idealized, unreal woman who would never betray his commands and trust. Thus, he would always continue in search of a new wife and companion, to satisfy his desires and fill the existential void of a petty, selfish and violent life. In his search, he discovered that he was able to escape from his island once a year, for a brief period. Three days after escaping the island, no matter where he is, he is transported to his chair in the castle library by the insistent calls of the spirit of his dead wives. Realizing also that his past and former dead wives could hinder the prospects of new matrimonial unions, he adopted a new identity, abandoning the name of Raoul de Seal and using the name of Blausbart Skatten. Bluebeard started again with his marriage attempts, and despite his grotesque appearance, managed to marry a woman named Ursula. The marriage was short-lived, as Bluebeard was able to read talks in her mind that he considered unfaithful. He murdered her, publicly claiming that she had been killed by a thief 
who tried to break into the castle. Bluebeard discovered that when he married a new wife, the specters of his former wives temporarily receded into the secret room. As soon as the new wife entered the house of the castle, the ghosts gathered and waited to watch the events unfold. His subsequent wives followed a similar fate, searched through their own thoughts for traits that represented imaginary breaches of trust or fidelity. Many met an abrupt end at the killer's hand. The few that didn't show thoughts that displeased him ended up remaining alive until the day he decided to test them about their obedience and curiosity. Using the ability he had to briefly escape his prison of mists, Bluebeard announces his journey to distant lands and leaves with his wife the golden key to the secret room. The golden key had now become a magically enchanted artifact and Bluebeard knows immediately whenever the secret door is opened. The red stain that marks the key whenever a wife turns the lock cannot be erased and only disappears with the death of the wife overcome by curiosity. After four years of Ursula's death, he married Antonia and after murdering her, he claimed that she died peacefully in her sleep, for reasons never clarified. In 657, his new victim was Karina, from the lands of Valaka, and he claimed that she died accidentally after suffering a fall and violently hitting her head. In 670, Alana of Nvidia met the same fate, with Blaubarts having claimed that she perished in childbirth and that the child had also did not survive. To make his version believable, he ordered the hanging of a woman of the island whom he falsely accused of being Alana's midwife. Bluebeard also noticed a supernatural effect on his victims' bodies. From the putrefying bodies of their wives, their withered eyes turn into beautiful blue gems, which fall from their empty sockets. Lord Bluebeard discovered he was able to use a mystical mirror he owned to peer through these gems. Whenever he obtains a new gem of Blaustein, he always spread word of its presence so that it reached the ears of the aristocracy. He then starts spying on distant lands through his magic mirror and mainly looking for new wives that please him. He then proceeds to use his newly acquired mystical powers to send constant dreams to his victims, which contain mental suggestions often trying to attract them to Blaustein, or somehow become a presence in their minds and their families, as a way of arranging a future marriage with the family. Over the years, Bluebeard also noticed two curious circumstances about his new condition. He no longer seemed to suffer from the effects of time and aging. Also, his grotesque and swollen features seemed to be getting softer and smoother, as if his appearance became more and more beautiful and softer as his soul was lost in the darkness of his crimes. Knowing that his lack of aging, changes in his appearance, and reputation as an unlucky husband would jeopardize future marriage prospects, he decided to change his identity. In 677, he announces Blaubart's death and assumed the identity of Wolfgang Blauer. Altering the memory of his subjects, his lie was easily implemented. A little more restrained in his marriages than his previous persona, as Wolfgang, he married twice, with all his wives following the same tragic fate. His first wife was named Sophia and died in 684. He claimed that she was the victim of a hunting accident, when she was accidentally shot by a hunter. Once again, to lend credibility to his story, an unfortunate inhabitant of Blaustein was hanged as the alleged hunter. 
Wolfgang's second wife was Claire from the lands of Borca and was murdered in 697. She was reported to have died in a drowning. After 20 years as Wolfgang, he decided to take a new identity. Although he was still considered an ugly man, his appearance has softened even more and few could guess that he was a Caliban. He adopted the name of Florian de Puissange and assumed his identity in 697. Florian's first wife was a young woman of Vistani origin named Marcia. Not even the potent gift of premonition that some Vistani possess was able to save Marcia from Bluebeard's rampage and she was killed in 705 with Bluebeard having claimed that she was buried after a castle wall collapsed over her. The Vistani, however, have their ways of unlocking mysteries, and after this event, no other Vistani women have visited the island of Blaustein. Florian's second wife was Lydia of Kimoni, and she was murdered in 713. He announced that she had taken the wrong dose of medication prescribed by a doctor. Again, to avoid suspicion, he shows an island inhabitant as guilty of the death and condemned the supposed doctor to death in an incendiary pyre. Using the power of the Blaustian gems, Bluebeard even managed to make the mists attract one of his future wives to his lands. Loyal. Living in the distant city of Paridon, somewhere far away in the land of the mists, she began to suffer from strange dreams and Bluebeard's mental suggestions, summoning her to come to his land and become his wife. Such was the mental assault on Laurel, that she eventually entered the mists at night and ended up being engulfed and transported to Blaustein. The young woman appeared in Bluebeard's castle, suffering from a severe case of confusion and amnesia. Bluebeard, happy with the effects of his plan, became Laurel's guardian and teacher, trying to help her recover at least part of her capabilities. Soon, abusing her trust, he cut at her and took her in marriage. Laurel, at first, met everything he wanted in a wife, and proved to be loyal and trustworthy. However, after a time, Bluebeard believed that she was looking for other men with desire. And as punishment, he ripped her eyes out of their sockets. Laurel's family on Paradon was desperately trying to find the missing young woman, especially her adopted brother, Lord Herondon. Using every mystical means and investigations at his disposal, he managed to find his sister whereabouts and traveled to Blaustein to rescue her. Taken by Connemore to Bluebeard, he angrily declaimed his intention to take his sister back, claiming to have learned much about his terrible past of Bluebeard and his dead wives. Bluebeard initially reacted firmly and courteously assuring that no harm had come to his half-sister and that she was alive. Lord Herodon demanded to see Laurel immediately, but Bluebeard said he could not let him go about spreading lies about his person and marriage. Insinuating that Lord Herodon actually had a love interest in his half-sister, he said that he would only let him see his wife if he gave a guarantee that, should she not agree to leave the company of her husband, he would never more speak against his honor. Herodon agreed to this deal, but Bluebeard then showed his violent face. Dominating Herodon with his strong arms, he called for Connemore, who helped to immobilize him. He then forced Herodon to open his mouth and brutally ripped out his tongue claiming that his word was not enough guarantee for him. The mutilated visitor received help from the castellan Connemore, 
so that he would not bleed to death. And so Bluebeard honored his word, allowing Herodon to be admitted to Laurel's dark bedroom. In the total dark and unable to speak, he tried to reach out to Laurel and pled with her to get away from this horrible place. Laurel resisted Herodon, however, screaming at him to get away from her. Only when the flash of lightning of a storm lit up the dark room did he realize that Laurel no longer had eyes in his sockets. He would never be able to convince his frightened sister to flee with him, as he was unable to speak and she was unable to see her brother before her. Laurel was murdered shortly after this sinister event. Herodon, after entertaining Bluebeard in this cruel game of torture, was taken to the entrance hall of the castle, where he fell into the trap and went to a fatal fall. It is said that his body found no rest after death, and that he roams the underground caverns as an undead, waiting the chance to one day escape and exact revenge on his capital. In 735, Bluebeard again changed his identity, and assumed his current identity as Lord Raoul Morel. Under this new mask, he has already managed to marry and murder three other wives. Annabelle, who came from Dimolu, was murdered in 743, and official records attest that she was poisoned after being bitten by a serpent. In 751, Coletta, also of Dimolu, died, and records say that she died of pneumonia. Eventually, his last wife, Marielle of Darkon, was also killed for her curiosity, but supposedly perished of yellow fever in 760. While leading the domestic life of a serial killer of his wives, Bluebeard has commanded Blausing to become a haven for pirates and criminals, where all manner of scoundrels can find work and a new life, so long as they pledge their loyalty to their leader. Their constant looting and capturing of prisoners and slaves for the black market marked Blausin as an enemy nation to other realms of the Land of the Mists. No direct attacks managed to reach its ports, however, as the rocky walls offer great natural protection to the island. The port of Rice is also very well protected, and no attacks have effectively reached its shores. Assassination and infiltration attempts also seem to be quickly deterred by the island's absolute loyal and fanatic population. Several trade embargoes have been imposed on Blaustein, but Bluebeard always managed to outsmart his enemies, exploiting the greed and weakness of captains and sailors, and the commercial advantages of doing business with the island always end up attracting opportunities for trade the only nation that seems to have really put a limit on Blaustein's corsairs was the realm of Darkon, which after the return of Azani Rex, built an imposing fleet of warships that patrolled the northern seas. Bluebeard and his pirates managed a truce of sorts, however. While Darkon ships don't seem to become frequent targets of pirate attacks, many pirate ships seem to provide a large supply of captive slaves to feed the dungeons of Kargat and the monsters that rule it. Blaustein Domain is gaining a brief mention in the Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. This mention, however, boils down to a single sentence, which attests that there was a fortress once ruled by the infamous Bluebeard, but that he was dethroned by the specters of his dead wives, who are now dedicated to torturing him. Pain and suffering await us in our torture sessions with Bluebeard. He asks us a lot of questions, although he often seems to know our answers before we even have time to answer the question. Our minds are ravaged by his mental powers, yet he takes pleasure in punishing us 
every time we tell a lie. After a short time, he discovers our purpose in investigating him as a favor for Captain Howell and his bride Anne Garnier, and even our purpose in going to the island of the media to search for the whereabouts of Dr. Rudolf von Richten. He seems to enjoy the whole process, and we go so far as to beg him to kill us at once to ease our suffering. Our pleas are met by a malicious, cruel smile. Don't worry, my dears. You have told me much about my present wife and the treacherous Captain Howie, and for that I am grateful. Death will not be a fitting punishment for your disloyalty. On the contrary, I will make sure that you reach the destination you so desire. A short time later, we are taken out of our dungeon by militiamen. Bluebeard makes a point of stripping us of all our possessions, including our blessed amulets of Hala. Too weakened to fight back, we are driven to the harbor of Rice, where we glimpse Captain Howie's body swinging from the gallows in the main square. Our destination, however, is another vessel called the Mercy. Coins are exchanged between the captain and our captors, and we are taken aboard. Cabins do not await us on this ship, as we are forced to enter coffins who leads a nailed shirt. For a moment, we fear that we will simply be thrown into the ocean to drown. Our destination, however, is the hold of this vessel. Through a small opening in the lid of the coffins, we are precariously fed through a journey of many days to the Sea of Sorrows, until we finally reach the island of the Minia. Join us, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications, and let's explore what awaits us in the island of Dominia. But before we enter Dominia, let's take a short break from our explorations, to revisit the first domain of the Land of the Mists, and return once more to Barovia. In the next video, I will cover Barovia as seen in the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, and bring my own thoughts on how to make changes to Curse of Strahd adventure, to have continuity and integration with the classic Ravenloft setting.